So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm going to uh, speak about virtual acoustics, but before that, some, some other things. So, there was in, in the news uh, in Helsingin Sanomat that the, that the uh, children of academic people is taking places of, in academia. And let's see how it goes in, in my case. So, uh, I uh, finished my PhD at the age of, of 31, 10 years ago. So we can go and, and look at my father. So uh, he finished his PhD at the age of 33 at the University of Helsinki and became a professor as a director of the Finnish Museum of Natural History uh, about 15 years ago. Then we can go and look at his father. He was a uh, professor in applied mathematics at the Helsinki University of Technology, finished his PhD at the age of 33. And uh, one interesting thing is that, that he actually ordered the first computer for Helsinki University of Technology 50 years ago. Then we can go and, and look at his father, uh, Carl Ole Flindekvist, who was actually a researcher and teacher in history and finished his doctoral dissertation already 140 years ago at the age of 28, so on the current scale actually quite fast. And, uh, and he wrote a lot of, of history texts uh, like Ylenen history and also the history of Hamelinna. And, and get a professor title as a honorary title in 1990. So there is some evidence that the academics, the children of academics people take to academia positions. So, uh, and I, uh, as far as I know, I tried to and, uh, ask this from uh, the association of professors, but uh, uh, nobody knows, but it seems that this is the first, I'm the first professor in, in, in fourth in a row directly. So I have a son. Uh, and uh, there, is, uh, there is no pressure. He can do whatever he, he wants in a life, but there, there might be some expectations. Okay, if we go to the virtual acoustics, to the, to the main topic. So what is virtual acoustics? Uh, if we look at the two words uh, separately, we can look at the virtual one. It's something which is not real, so it's, it's being on or simulated uh, with a computer. And then the acoustics is a science which deals with sound, so anything with sound production, control, transmission, reception. So we are making research out of something which does not exist and you cannot see. And uh, I have a few examples here, what we are doing. So the main, uh, my main motivation is, is that I try to understand how a space modifies sound. Not, I'm not interested in, in sound production as such, so how sound sources produce, produce sound, so how, how my uh, speech is, is produced with my organs, but how the space modifies it. And it involves heavily like physics, so we have to understand that how, how sound waves propagate and how they reflect from surfaces that we are doing also uh, with simulations with computers. And then there is a strong part of, of perceptual part, so we try to understand that how we actually perceive spaces and, and especially sounds in space. And then where you can apply this information is, is we can design acoustically better base spaces. There is now a big discussion about uh, lecture halls and, and kindergartens and whatever, how they should be designed. And then also how we can implement sound rendering in personal communication devices so that the sound quality is better. So this is one of the example is here, a small demonstration that that when we learn things, how we can actually then disseminate the information. My voice is recorded in an anechoic chamber, and now you are hearing only the direct sound without any acoustics or reflections. In a concert hall, flat surfaces made out of concrete reflect the sound, resulting in much louder and stronger sound. However, if we cover the walls with diffusers which distort the temporal envelope of sound, my voice is weaker. Now we add more lateral, temporal, envelope preserving reflections later than 30 milliseconds after the direct sound, and you are hearing hints about the space around me. Again, the temporal envelope distorting reflections render the sound weaker. In contrast, when these laser reflections are coming from the same interaural direction, with the direct sound, my voice is more coloured and may be perceived as more distant. 
With the late reverberation of a real concert hall, the change in direction and time of early reflection are still perceived while their delays are not changing. Okay, uh, of course, in, in this acoustics and, and with, with these two loudspeakers, you cannot perceive all the differences. Uh, but this was uh, one of our recent publications, maybe one of the most important ones, uh, where we showed that the diffusers in a concert hall, it's not, uh, it's not a good thing as, as has been thought like several hundred of years. So what is research fields involved in, in my research team? There is a, uh, this is just a, some of these. In other universities, it's a core that, that we do multidisciplinary work and, and I can guarantee that we are doing that. Because we, we have to know something about architecture, about psychoacoustics, so how people perceive sound, something about music, the audio technology, so that we can capture and reproduce the sound in, in our laboratory, uh, about physics, about signal processing, how we have to process the signals. And then we are doing a lot of listening tests trying to understand that how actually our hearing work and how people perceive things. And then it involves quite heavy statistics to, to understand then the uh, the results. So I, I'll, I'll take a few examples of what we have been doing research lately. So this is uh, Epidaurus. Some of you know it's an ancient theater in Greece, built some 2,000 years ago, uh, uh, which is huge space and, and has been very well known about the speed intelligibility. So even though you are sitting there like 70 meters from the stage, which actually was here but it's ruined, uh, you can hear very clearly what somebody is saying. So we went there, this is my Italian colleague who made a measurement there. So this was a firecracker that you can do as an impulse sources outside. And you can hear this kind of tone which is like the reverberation of the, of the system. But of course there is no ceiling and, and no back wall and whatever. And it's, it's quite special kind. So what we did in, in, our, in our team, we did a 3D model of the space. So this is only the lower cover of the, so it's, it's continuing here. And then also build the stage uh, with computer which is not exist anymore. And then the sound sources in ancient Greece was uh, male speech because there was male, uh, male speakers who actually act these poems and, and uh, spell these poems to the audience. So uh, we did some simulations. Uh, and this is a 2D simulation, but also in 3D, and so how the sound propagates. And here we can see that, okay, the sound source is here, and it, it emits this kind of wavefront. This is the direct sound. But then there is, if we go further in time, there is also a reflection from the floor, and then reflection from this surface, and again from the floor, and so on. And then when you go to the audience area, you have this kind of backscattering from, from all these steps, which are seen here. And these are all has been known earlier also that they have some influence to the sound, but, but uh, there is some discussion that, that how they influence to the sound. And what we found out that, that at least in our simulations, it was quite interesting that, that we took all these receiver positions, so like one receiver in, in each step, and took the frequency response out of this. And these are the, the gray curves are the frequency responses. So how different frequencies are amplified by the theater. And when you uh, uh, overlay that uh, with the spectrum of the male speeds, you see that, okay, that's quite a good match. So actually, uh, the lowest frequencies which we have in speeds, where the power of the speed is, it's actually amplified quite a lot in this theater. But there, where, is, where you don't have any excitation in your speeds, that's not amplified. So the noise is not amplified. Only the frequencies which are important for speeds. And, and of course, the speed intelligibility is, is carried over one kilohertz, you don't see it here, but all these backscattering actually gives you quite a lot of high frequencies and that's the source for the high speed intelligibility. So that's one of the things that, that we take existing spaces and try to understand that, that how they actually sound and, and what makes the, the quality of sound as, as people usually say that some, some spaces are better or not. So how about concert halls? Then we can listen to the sound of a concert halls or the acoustics. So this is only the acoustics. Okay. 
Okay, you hardly hear any dif any differences in this this space. They are not loud enough. But when you listen them spatially, there are some differences. And this is only the acoustics, so we have emitted an impulse on stage, and then you hear only the acoustics. But of course, we are listening to music in concert halls. So you can guess already that, okay, we have, we have a simulated symphony orchestra made out of loudspeakers that we are using as an excitation in these halls. And from these, uh, from these loudspeakers, we need anechoic signals because we need a symphony orchestra where the, in the recording there is no acoustics involved. So it has to be anechoic recorded in an anechoic space. So how to record a full symphony orchestra in an anechoic space? Of course, you can take it out on the field, and, and that's almost unechoic, but that's not very handy. So what we did, uh, we recorded them one by one in an unechoic room that we have in, in a School of Electrical Engineering. Uh, and, and to be able to play their own part in the whole symphony, they actually saw the conductor on the video, and then they hear, heard a, a piano track of this symphony that they played. And, and with these two, they can actually accommodate it and, and, and they can play in sync and in, in tune. So, uh, how it goes, this is a small example of that. So we recorded every instrument one by one. This is the piano which is then taken off afterwards. As you can hear, there's no acoustics in the end. So there is, there is a lot of, of research also in that, because we, we, also, we only had the chance to, to record one violinist, and now we have to make the section sound. That's the, the other publication, which is just uh, published in, in Journal of New Music Research, that how we, mo how we actually multiply this one violin so that it sounds like a section. The trick is to put them, take copies, some time variation, some amplitude variation, and some some out-of-pitch tuning, so that they sound like a humans, uh, like oh, humans playing them. Okay, what we then do, we go to different concert halls, we build this loudspeaker orchestra, and we uh, then with these uh, signals we can guarantee that the orchestra plays exactly the same way in each hall. And, and that's, the, that's the source material that we are then uh, processing for our listening room, and then we ask people to come to listen there and, and, and rate the halls and, and do some sensory profiling of, of these halls. The trick is that, that uh, now when we have used this loudspeaker orchestra and these signals that we have recorded unequivocally, you can actually listen to different concert halls so that the music goes and you can jump from hall to hall. I have a small demo out of that. So we have here six concert halls, and you can see the, the uh, image where the sound is captured in each, each of these halls. So for example, we can go to listen to Sibelius Hall, the same music. Or we can jump directly to the Finlandia Hall. Or to the new music hall. Or Pori. or Hämeenlinna, or we can go in the front row, maybe we take Musiikkitalo in the fr front row, and then we go to the back row. So this is the difference in if you are sitting in the front in New Music Hall in Helsinki, or if you are sitting in the, in the first row. Uh, 
so these are the, the signals that we are using uh, then in our listening tests. And then uh, uh, lately uh, we have been doing also some analysis of where the sound energy is coming because we all know that, that it's important and, uh, at which time moment and then also in which direction because we have two ears which are on the opposite side of the head so there is some, some uh, people use this information that we have two ears uh, to capture the spatial sound so uh, we have developed a new method how to analyze also the sound in space uh, and, and we can here, for example, compare that how if you are sitting in, in the Sibelius Hall in Lahti, you get the direct sound from this, but then you get very uh, strong reflections from the side. And this is usually considered as good. But then, for example, if you are in a Finlandia Hall, this is more or less as an oval, and, and you have no reflections from the side at all. And if you actually go to the new music hall, it's quite close to the Finlandia Hall even though people are saying that it's totally different, but it's the closest one if you look this. But that's another debate that we can discuss later on. Uh, okay, what we then do uh, with these, uh, these signals and, and, and the listening tests, uh, we try to understand that what people prefer. Uh, we ask their preference, but as, as acoustics is, is mainly a matter of taste, we, we cannot go anywhere if we just ask that which one is the best one. So we, we use sensory profiling uh, or the methods called sensory profiling and, and sensory evaluation to get out the information, for example, how these samples and how these concert halls differ in proximity in baseness or loudness or whatever things. The, the thing goes so that, that people come there and listen and then they have to actually say that I hear differences in clarity. I hear differences in juiciness was one. And one said that, that there is a difference in the beefness of sound. And whatever, we collect all these and then, uh, then we use uh, high level statistics or, or like more advanced statistics to find out like the common perceptual factors that there are in, in, in differences of these, is, on, on these concert halls. And then, then when we ask also the preference, now we can explain the preference with these sensory profiles. But I'm actually quite happy that uh, the methodology comes from food industry and we got our first citations in, in this journal or this article. It cites our work that, that these methods have been used also for concept hall acoustics, but it's Food Research International. It's, it's the journal that recently cited our paper. Okay, what next? Uh, we have, we have studied quite a lot of, of Finnish concert halls and now we really want to do, know that what, how the best concert halls in the world uh, sound. So we are planning a tour or we are going in November into Central Europe uh, to, to measure the Music Verein and the Concert Gebau in Amsterdam, one of the famous, most famous concert halls in the world. And of course there are, there are concerts every evening so we have to do the measurements by night. So we are renting also a bus where we can sleep while traveling between the cities. But let's see, maybe next spring I can tell you some results that why, why Music Ferran is, is the best concert hall in the world, as people say. So thank you for your attention and these are the funding bodies who believe that this is important.